if it asks for correlation coefficient on a line, they're asking for the slope. So if you have some points, um, stat, edit, one, two, three, four, and six, seven, nine, ten. Go to stat, calculate linear regression right there, and hit enter. And this one and two, calculate there. So technically, what's your slope of that line? 1.4. So 1.4 is your slope. So that means there's a positive correlation because 1.4 is positive. So it's a positive correlation, and that's what we're going to talk about. I'm not going to, I'm not going to spend a lot of time teaching you to do a 15-minute problem. I'm not going to do that. Okay, so just chill on the chapter four. We'll get to that after we talk about counting. When y'all come back, just remind me. You know, remind me, okay? To go over four. All right. So the last section we're going to talk about counting. Now everybody in here knows how to count. That's not what counting is in statistics or probability. Counting is using. Numbers for sequence for combinations and permutations. Okay, we're going to be using exponents. Not very much. We're not going to use too many exponents. But we're also going to be using factorial. And factorial is given by a what? Estimation. Now, in some certain formulas, or some certain questions, that they may ask uh, a license plate factory Oh, that's an SC word. How do you spell license? I can't get that right. L-I-C. L-I-C? L-I-S. I always. I don't think that's right. S-C. I'll tell you what. Let's do this. Best thing to do when you can't spell, dang old, license plate back. Because half the time when I spell something right up here, it don't go right. All right. You have a license plate back. All right. And you got a set of license plates for New Jersey. And let's say we're going to have seven digits, seven slots. I like to use the word slots because it makes better sense to some people. All right. Seven slots, and you can use from zero to nine. Zero to nine digits. Okay, at this point, you've got seven slots, and you've got ten digits. So how do we use that? Well, with a simple problem like a license plate or an alarm, you just take the digits and you raise it, I can't spell this morning, and you raise it to the slot power. So that would be 10 to the what? 10 to the 7th power, which is some VA number, 100,000 or something like that. Now, those are problems you're going to see at the first part of your homework. I don't really care about them on the test. All right? You may see one on the test. That's it. I don't really care too much for these, but that's the way we're going to be using the exponents. Pretty simple. What's it about to be? One million or 100,000? What is it? It's, huh? I haven't got my 
Whatever you say. Well, ten million. Yeah. Okay, so that's ten million different places. Place. Well, what if you decide? Well, we need to make some more license plates because we want to run out in New Jersey. Uh, so I'm just going to add. I'm going to take one of those slots and make it a letter. Well, then what will it be then? Well, it'll be. Well, let me do this. Hold on a second. I'll try counting check training that I didn't get. I had to learn my own because we didn't have training. Anyway, uh, let's say I want to put in a letter. One letter and six slots with a number. Okay, so that's going to be 26 to the what power? No, this is one slot. So that's going to be 26 to the first power times 10 to the what power? And that's going to be some DA number. And of course, what if I did a second letter? Then it would be 26 to the second power times 10 to the what? Fifth power, and so on. What do you mean? Like, how do you like, change the numbers? How do you do that? Oh, because there's seven. Okay. So, yeah, there's seven. There's still seven slots. Okay. But I, but I said to myself, well, I've used all the digits here. I've used zero to nine digits. I can't add any more digits because those those are the only single digits there are. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I can't put double digits because that would mess up everything. And so I got to change something else. So I take one of the slots and I start putting letters in it. And that drops the seven slots down to what? Six slots. So I've got one slot that's a letter and then six slots is numbers zero through nine. And that just makes more license plates. And that's eventually how you end up with three letters and three numbers. That's eventually how you add that, you know, because a long time ago, in South Carolina, I don't know, I don't know the history of license plates in South Carolina, but I assume at one point we had all letters, all numbers, and then eventually we used up all those numbers, and then we started putting in what? So if you had, like South Carolina now, we have six slots. In South Carolina, we have six slots for the regular license plates, and the first three are, aren't the first three letters, so that'd be 26 to the what? Third power times 10 to the what? Third power. And that's how many license plates you can make there. But now we transfer license plates and reuse license plate numbers, so, you know, once you get to a certain point, then you start, unless you're going to change. Now, the P license plate that we use in South Carolina follows this. The farm license plate, like I have on my truck, two letters, that's M, and then the rest of the letters are, the rest of the digits are numbers. I don't know how many it is, but I know the two are letters, F and M, which narrows it down. Instead of 26 to the first power, it'd be, or 22nd to the sixth. The one <laughs> power. And and one to the first power, and then six digits, or however many digits are in my to the tenth or ten to the sixth power, depending on how many slots I have for my numbers. So that's how you use the exponents. On a scale from one to ten, how important are these? About a two on the test. Okay, I'm really concerned more about what we're going to go over next, and that's the factorials. Okay. Now, what do we do with factorials? Factorial. No, that's an algebra, but that's a good guess. Factorial, the definition for factorial is multiplying numbers in sequence.
down to 1. Why do I not include 0? Because 0 cancel everything out, so you'll get 0 no matter what the sequence is. So you can't do that. So you just go down to 1. So 3 factorial is equal to 3 times 2 times 1. 4 factorial is equal to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now the very basic question that's asked with this problem is you got a word. Smile. It's the longest word in the, in the English language. Why? Because it's got a mile in it. Anyway, you got how many letters? Five letters? Five letters. How many other different words without meaning can you make with five letters? Five factorial. Five times four times three times two times one. And that would be five times four is 20. 20 times three is 60. 60 times two is 120. So there's 120 different combinations of that word, of those letters that you can make. Now that's the type of question you'll get with a basic factorial. Okay, now, does leans, does that, is that a word that makes any sense? No, but it's a combination. Whereas limes, L-I-M-E-S, that is a fruit. I guess it's a fruit. Okay. Uh, miles is a word, but L-E-M-S is not a word. So there's 120 not words, but combinations of letters that you can put. Now that's a very basic factorial. Now, if you look in your book, there's two formulas that you need to look up. I'm not going to write them down because they're really useless to write down. One is for a combination. Combination, order with an X to it. That means no order, for those that don't know what that means. Permutation. equals order. Now, those of you that have a book, look through, and I'll try to pull up the formula here in just a minute. But the short formula that's in your calculator is N, C, R, and N, P, R. What is N? N is usually the largest number is also usually out of how many tries? I usually say out of how many? R is usually your smaller number. Yeah, give me that because some of y'all don't have a book. What's the pages for combination? Combination is 277. Page 237? 277. 277. And what's the permutation? 275. Thank you. 275. Yes, sir. Okay, the smaller number, and I usually tell students R is the slot. How many slots do you have to put those numbers in? Okay. Same thing with permutation. Now, what do you mean order? Order, I'm going to give you two type questions that you're going to do a permutation. Two type questions are, one is race. Now, I don't mean racism, okay? I don't mean race like that. Everybody's focused on race. Everybody's a racist today. But... The race as far as a one, two, three, which comes in first, second, and third, because that's an order. 
All right, the second type will be a board with a president of what? What comes after Vice president? president? Vice president, secretary, treasurer. Usually when you see one of these board type questions, they're going to give you offices, chairman, vice chairman, secretary, three. So, but what is the combination? Combination is everything else. But usually combination is going to deal with the lottery type question. Now, if you look on your handy dandy calculator, you're going to see the, I think it's under math. Yeah, hit the math key and go over the probability, and there are number two, number three, and number four. This one's number two, and this one's number three, I think. Yeah. And number four is your basic factorial. So if you wanted to go through and let's say a question, um, um, I'm thinking of a six letter word, but seven letter word. I can't think of any words right now. But anyway, if you wanted to do factorial, we'll just do six factorial. License. What? License. license. I can't even spell <laughs> license. I want to say there's an S and a C in there. There is. Okay. Um, That's, it's the, uh, there's two types of words that I can't spell. One is words like necessary. Oh, yeah. I have no idea how to spell necessary. And I don't need, excuse me, I don't need a lesson in, teach, in uh, spelling, okay? Okay. The second thing that I can't spell is words that have an S and a C in it. The only word I can spell is discipline, and that's because they drill it inside you at Paris Island. D I S C S I P L I N E. So discipline is this instant will and obedience. I still remember that. Okay, the instant will and obedience to obey orders. They 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 drill that in your head at Paris Island. Okay, so that's the only S C word that I know how to spell. Discipline. But other than that, it's it's hard for me to spell license. And there's another word that I always have a have a it's got an S C in it. Decision. Oh my gosh. I have to look up decision every time, and I make and I make lots of recommendations with students for, for uh, what do you call them things, scholarships, and going into another college and everything because I'm a math teacher. So I do it in a decision. I, I have to look that up every single time. So everybody's got words and numbers they hate. Who's got a word they hate? Yeah, that's a bad one. Yeah, you don't want to put a U in it. Or it doesn't have a U in it. It does. It does. You all put restaurant, like rest area and run. Rest, run. Don't work that way. Oh my gosh. And then, and then you got some word, and they say I before E except after blah blah blah. That don't work all the time. Okay. What's another word? Definitely. Oh gosh. Now I can spell. Believe it or not, I can spell spaghetti. But that word you're talking about was definitely. definitely. I have no idea how to spell it. I, I always have one defiantly. Yeah, I just say duh. Well, 99 percent of I, 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 that's how that's what I do. See, perm combination. I know how to spell combination. Permutation. P e r m u t a t i o n. I have to think about it. But 99% of you have a word or a number that you don't want. I'm forgetting about the other people that walk on water. But most of you have a word or a letter or a word or a number that you don't like to multiply. So, but there's only a few of us that walk on water. I don't know if any of y'all do, but there's always one person in the group that can spell every word and can do every number. So walk on water, bud. All right, so here we go. Eight. I can't stand to add eight or multiply eight. Six. Factorial. Math. Five. 
And what is six factorial? Okay, well, come back, come back. I didn't mean for y'all to take off, okay? Come back. Six factorial, we said, was 120. You hit six, math, go down to number four or whatever, factorial, and hit enter. 720, I'm sorry, 720. We did four factorial or something, five factorial. So if you want to do that, I think your calculator will go up to 72 factorial. Let's try. 72 factorial second function, enter. Well, I'll just do that. 72, second function, insert 2, and enter. Now try 71, second entry, oh, go away, second entry, 71, okay, it must be 70 then, second entry, 70. Okay, well, y'all figure it out. I ain't got time for this. I ain't got time for this. 69. Let's try 69. There we go. 69 factorial is the highest your calculator will go. So how do you use these guys? Well, let's go to our handy-dandy South Carolina lottery. South Carolina education. All right, how to play. Write down that first paragraph, not the first and second, but just the first one. I want you to write it down. I'll try to blow it up for those people that sit in the back of the room who can't see squat. Yeah, don't sit at the front of the room where you can see, sit in the back. And then I'll forget, and then I'll say, you know, you know, I can't see the screen when I start writing with those people that can't. In other words, y'all are a pain. Sit up front. Now, there's two of these we're going to do. We're going to do the Mega Million, and we're going to do the Powerball, because that's the ones that are in South Carolina. Just write down that first sentence, or the first paragraph, and then we'll talk about lottery type questions. I need to pull up Excel spreadsheet. And another reason I was telling you about that calc class is I've got 12 trig students that I'm teaching right now, and they're going to be taking that trig class. So chances are it will make because I've got 12 students who want to take it. So that means probably nine of them will sign up. Something happens every, every time something happens, two or three. If you've got 12, that means 10 is going to show up in your next class. I don't understand what happens to those two or three. But yeah, Russia. Or white women. Don't never say that money don't talk. Because the NFL is now saying what? Oh, I think we're going to stand for the national anthem. You know why? Because the NFL ratings have dropped 25% in the last two weeks. 25%. We wouldn't have any problems if we'd amend the Constitution and send everybody overseas for a year after they graduate high school. We wouldn't have, any, we wouldn't have anybody protesting in the United States. We 
we'd have a lot of people kissing the ground of the United States. So Trump wins that one. And the media is just going crazy. Now they're saying that 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 his his uh, secretary of state called him a moron. I tell you what, if you still watch CNN news, you're an idiot. I'm sorry. It's all fake. I don't even want to watch any of the news. It's all fake. Well, that's just a cop out. Except for WYFF. Oh my God! Don't even get me started on the melodrama Sean, channel. Sean, the melodrama channel. Yes, there's a hurricane in Las Vegas, and we will feel that in Greenville, South Carolina. <laughs> better bundle up tonight. Yeah, better bundle up tonight. It's, it's, it's reported in, in Death Valley, in Death Valley, California, the temperature is going to get down to 32 degrees, and that will affect Greenville, South Carolina. <laughs> so let's go out and buy all the milk and bread you can. Get you a first weather alert at Pilo. All the school districts will be closed. Exactly. So if you want melodrama, turn to WYFF because they will scare the crap out of you with any event. Any event, like a dog walks into the road. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And major earthquake in Europe. There was a girl in Greenville County that was in Europe during that. Uh, who cares? <laughs> There's not much that goes on in this county, so you really got to Well, that's the, that's, the, that's the sign of a podunk city. If you're a podunk city, you do everything you can to try to look like what? A big city. All right. Y'all ready? So, how many numbers... Does it take, well, first of all, let me go through this. In any lottery question, <laughs> I'm not doing it no more. Anybody else? You sit up front. All right. Any lottery question. And you better pay attention to this because it will get you on a test. Any, any lottery question. That asks about winning. Probability of winning. It will assume or give an indication that you buy at least what? One ticket. Now that's very important because some of you will do this question and you'll put the probability is 292 million blah 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 and you'll get it wrong. Because they are asking you what is the probability of what? Winning. So there's a there's a there's a there's a saying that goes with the lottery. You can't win the lottery if you don't what? If you don't play. If you don't buy a ticket, there's no way in Hades you're gonna win. So they're assuming that you're buying one ticket. So that means one over the probability of winning. Now be very careful. This book is a little bit better than the last book. The last book we had, they would ask you a question and say, what is the probability of winning? And the teacher had to go out of their way to show you this because people would put just the probability. They wouldn't put it under one. Okay? Now this is the least you can buy, the least tickets you can buy to enter the lot one. Now, I'm going to show you in a minute. It's also the smartest number to pick. Now, the probability of winning the Powerball and the Mega Million 
is going to have to be a multiplicative problem. It's going to have to consider two combinations. N combination R times N combination R. Now go through your paragraph. How many slots are in the first probability? Remember, it's usually the smallest number. What? Five. Five. So that's going to be one over C5. And how many numbers can we pick from? One through 69, and that's the biggest number, so that's N. And then the second number, how many slots? One. And how many numbers can we choose? And there is your probability for winning the Powerball lottery. Zero to 69, or one to 69 and 69. Don't think too much. <coughs> No, no more sneezing, please. All right, so calculate it. So take your handy dandy calculator, and if you try to do this with the formula, it'll take you about 15 minutes. I mean, I'm serious. That's why I don't even show the formula. So let's go with 1 divided by parentheses, parentheses. And second entry. Okay, it's not going to do that. So I got to, okay, forget it. One divided by parenthesis, parenthesis. And I'm going to type in 69 math combination five close parenthesis times open parenthesis 26. Combination, math, probability, combination, one, which is 26, close parentheses, close parentheses. And that's going to give me, <coughs> good God, people, go home, drink some orange juice, <laughs> eat some soup. All right. That's not racist, is it? Orange juice and soup, that's not racist, is it? Okay. Okay, well, I'm sorry. Yeah, somebody's offended. All right, usually soup and orange juice helps you get rid of colds. That's why I said that. I'm surprised it ain't racist to somebody. All right, so, but that doesn't help us because that gives us the, the final. But what is the bottom part? Well, take your second entry and take out the one. So delete, delete. That's your answer, 3.4 times 10 to the negative ninth power. But what is the denominator? The denominator is that denominator. So 1 in what? 200, 1 in 300 million, basically. 1 in 292 million. 201,338. That's what people want to hear. They want to hear what the, uh, what the probability is. 1 in 293 million. 292 million. So let's look and see what the odds are. Just wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm getting there. Can I be in charge for a while? Okay. What is the odds? One in, look at there, they got the same number we got. Ain't that something? 292,201,338. Now you know how they get that number. Now, to answer your question, usually they will ask you for a fraction for a lot of them, most of the time. But sometimes they ask you for a decimal. So let's take, for example, this problem, and I'm just going to, now this is something, uh, when I was at Clemson, Clemson, I had a professor that taught every single one of my, I had three professors, I had like 20 math, uh, 20 math classes, and three professors taught all 20 of those math, Dr. Hare, 
Dr. Brawley and Dr. Ruffle, Dr. Ruffle. Those are the three math professors I had. I mean, it seems like every math class they taught, I had to take that semester. But anyway, there's three nice guys and Dr. Harden. Dr. Harden was, mm, mm, mm. he grunted all the time. He died. But I don't know about that. Dr. Hayer's still teaching because I had him for a graduate class. And he taught for a dollar a year. He's retired. He's, he's taught at Clemson like 500 years. And when he retired, he wanted to teach, so they pay him a dollar a year. And that's what he that's what he teaches for. I think that's interesting. And then Dr. Brawley, he was about three foot tall. And he is the reason I'm going to show you this. He wrote a book about gambling. And he wrote several books about gambling. And one of them was, how many tickets do I buy? Or something like that. It was some, some you just have to look up Brawley. Joel, I think his name is Joel. And uh, he wrote a lot of books on uh, gambling. And one of them talked about this. You buy one ticket. You buy 10 tickets. You buy 100 tickets. You buy... What? 1,000 tickets. You don't have to. This is just for your information. 10,000 tickets. 50,000 tickets. 100,000 tickets. Uh, 1 million tickets. 2 million tickets. And what are your chances? Well, then you go over here and you say, okay, well, N is equal to, what do we say, 69? 69. And then R was equal to 5. And then N is equal to 26. And then R is equal to 1. So you would go ahead and figure the probability and go out here and figure the probability and that's equal to come in write that down come in parentheses 69 comma 5 enter and then come in comma I meant parentheses 26 comma, 1, which is 26, it's going to come out to 6. No, that's not right. I'm oh, sneezing. Okay, so here I'm going to take this guy and divide by parentheses this guy, F4, times this guy, F4, parentheses, to lock it. Which, if you take those numbers and you put them over here, no, yeah, that's fine. And uh, extend it to 15 digits. Oops, sorry. Let's go to 15 or 20. Mm -hmm. Who's smarter? The guy buying one ticket or the guy buying a million tickets? One, because what is the mathematical probability up to a million tickets? Zero. Yes, if I could find the daggum whiteboard. The mathematical probability up to a million tickets is what? Zero. Zero. So the person buying one ticket has got just as much as chance as the person buying a million tickets. So when you go into a store and you see a guy buying 100 tickets, laugh at him and call him an idiot and see what happens. No, I'm just kidding. All right? 
He don't need to buy a hundred tickets. He only needs to buy what? One. So, and he talks about that in his book and talks about, you know, gambling in Vegas, what's 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 smarter, betting two hundred dollars or betting two thousand dollars, and he goes into all that kind of stuff. He gets real deep into the probability. So anyway, a lot of people don't even realize that, but and even if you even if you buy two million tickets, what's the problem in buying two million tickets? Well, you're buying two million tickets. How do you know that the lottery's not paying just three million dollars? Think about it. I don't know how much. You know, usually they start at twenty million. I buy a ticket every week. Do I buy it because I think I'm going to win it? No. The reason I buy it is because of the saying, you can't win if you don't what? Play. So I play every week just to play. I'm not one of these people that gives their check and their kids are running around on the floor of the convenience store in your diapers. No, I'm not one of those people. Okay? I, I play one. That's $3 a week. And I'm not a drinker or a smoker or a gambler or any of those bad things. I don't, I'm not any of those. So I think $3 a week I can get by with it. Awesome. Powerball is two dollars a ticket, and the Mega Million is one dollar a ticket. Now, speaking of the Mega Million, try it. Let's go to the Mega Million and let you do that. So, the Mega Million. Is right here. Uh, that's, yeah. All right. And if you can't see it, just ask the person to read it to you next to you or move to the front of the room. Okay? Are you like number one? There it is, number one, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to write down the whole thing word for word. You can just write down the logistics. Said Friday, not Thursday. Came by your office, you wasn't there. Came by your office, you wasn't there. So, hmm? so, well, you can have the computer pick them, or you can just pick numbers like your dog's birthday and your daughter's birthday and your kid's birthday. I just quick pick because it's all a crapshoot. So, you can go back and it's just like how many times did you did you roll a five on the die and your number was two, okay? Holly, I rolled five fives. Why can't I roll a number two? Well, as soon as you change it to five, it's going to roll all twos. Same thing with the lottery. You can go back for the last year and find and get an average of what number showed up the most. As soon as you do that, the other number is going to show up the most. So it's, it's fully random. There's no pattern, and people try to figure out a pattern. There's not one, unless you can tell what. Future, and if you can tell the future, then you just win a lottery every five or six years, and you won't have to work the rest of your life. <laughs> oh, well, I I don't tell the future that way. I I tell you what you want to know. I want to know. I want to know the lottery numbers. Here's a piece of paper. Write down the lottery numbers. Oh, I I can't do that. Okay, well then you pull stuff. <laughs> Because, first of all, if you could tell the future, you wouldn't be sitting in a chair telling people's future. <laughs> yeah, you would be paid by the federal government 
You'd be winning lottery. You take a trip to Las Vegas every now and then. What else could you do? Oh, there's all kinds of stuff you could do. Yeah, go. You know, win a championship game every now and then. But no, I'm going to turn all that over so I can tell you your fortune for five bucks. What doesn't add up there? All right, so we take it back to our handy dandy spreadsheet. And what's the numbers? 75 and 5. And then what's the N here? 15. And there is your numbers. Y'all should get, that's what you should get in your calculator. See if that's what you got. 3.86 times 10 to the negative ninth power. Now, well, what the heck do you do as far as a permutation? Permutation is pretty simple. Permutation, you just worry about the slots. Well, with, with president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer, how many slots is that? So R is going to be four. The only other number they're going to give you is how many people in the group, 15. There's 15 people in the, the uh, name of group. The NRA, okay. In the Anderson chapter of the NRA, there's 15 people. They have to they have to vote for a board, and the board consists of yeah those four things, okay. So that would be 15 permutation four. But what if the second part of the question? What if I say, well, there's also a committee of four people. How many blah blah blah? How many combinations? That would be a combination because a committee does not have what? Officers. So you need to write that down. Let's write one down. And we'll do this in on the whiteboard because I know y'all are having a heart attack, fixing to leave and everything. Got three minutes. <coughs> Besides, I don't have class in here afterwards, so you can take your time. All right, so organization has 15 people in it, and they need to create a board of president, vice president, secretary, treasurer. Therefore, R is equal to 4. So that would be A, how many boards can you have? So that would be 15 permutation of 4. B, how many Committees. There's one of those words again. I don't know if that's right or not. Can you have? Well, committees would be 15 combination of four. And there's the two type questions you will have. Another type question you will have. You've got 15 horses in a race. And you want to bet on number one, two, and three. How many different bets can you have? Well, that would be 15 permutation of what? Three. Three. Remember the slots. The slots are always smaller than the number. Okay? And then it'll say, it won't ask you a committee question. I don't think you have a committee of horses. All right? It's not. I mean, there's a few, but that's the only difference. That's the only difference. Yeah. They give you the same... The people are the same. The organization has 15 in it, and the number of members is four. Okay? This is four committee, uh, this is a committee member of four people. It might say that in the question, or it may just default to four people. It'll say something to that effect in the question. I was trying to do some checking. Make, yeah. I was like trying to like. Make it difficult. Four people, four people, yeah. 
Yeah, don't do that, no. All right. Now, you are good in 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, and I think 5.4. There's four sections. I don't know what the numbers are. When you all come back from break, we will go over briefly 4.1 and 4.2. But what will be after that? The test. The test. And we'll have to have it in class to us. Yeah. Unpassable. And that'll be the only one I'll have to do. After that, I'll have to give you an in-class final. But other than that, I don't have to give any more in-class. Y'all have a good day.